You know, I really like tea. What is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel and welcome today to a compilation of Xbox fanboys roasting me. Yes, you heard that right guys. I made a video about a month ago called why I'm not buying an Xbox Series X and why you shouldn't either. And you can tell just by the like to dislike ratio that uh, the fanboys descended in droves to make fun of me in this video and the comments they left. Oh my gosh, you would not believe the intensive salt levels of all these comments I got on this video. So I'm going to be going over them today, show how absolutely wrong I was in this video, and how all these fanboys totally proved me right that Xbox is the best thing since sliced bread. And uh, yeah, I guess after this video, I'll probably sell my PC and pre-order a new Xbox. I don't know, wait, I can't do that yet. Uh, well, as soon as, as soon as the time comes, th then we'll do it. So this first fine fellow says, Look, unless you want to buy me a gaming PC and some of my good friends one too, then I ain't switching to PC. I'd rather just not save up for four years just to get a PC that I'm going to have to spend more money on in the future. I'm broke. Well, buddy, I hate to break it to you, but I got some bad news. If you're broke, then you're not going to be able to afford a gaming machine at all, PC or console. I mean, a new console is not cheap. People are saying, and you know, take this with a grain of salt, but people are saying that the next generation Xbox is going to be five to six hundred dollars. Plus, you got to drop sixty dollars to play multiplayer with your friends that you were talking about. And what do you mean by spending more money on in the future? Spend money for what? More games? Again, you're going to do that with any platform ever. But hey, at least on PC, you can play multiplayer for free. You're not locked behind a $60 a year paywall to play with your buds. Oh, no, wait, that's right. It's $100 a year now because Microsoft is no longer selling 12-month subscriptions and only selling three-month ones at $25 for three months. If you're willing to drop five to $600 on a new console and $100 just to play your own games multiplayer, then you are not broke enough to not afford a PC. You can afford a beast of a PC at that price. You know how much my PC was? $800, and it crushes the current gen consoles. And three years later, I'm still going strong, baby. Or maybe some people just can't afford a three thousand five hundred dollar or four thousand five hundred dollar pc which is what you will need to have to play most new games yeah guys we're absolute idiots over here dropping enough money to buy a very nice used car on a gaming pc which is required to run games not even run them well it's just required to play most new games no, for real, This these type of comments are so idiotic because they're just making up some big scary number that sounds good and saying that's what you need for a PC. I don't know where people come up with this or why they say that, but my goodness, how much hardware would you actually need in order to spend that much money on a PC? You're talking like water-cooled dual RTX 3090s or some garbage crap like that. You're talking like two AMD Ryzen processors and four terabytes of solid state drive running in raid mode. It's like you would have to build a government computer at this price point. Oh my gosh. And then use it to play your games, of course. But you know, most new games, which it would be required to run. Let's not forget that part. So this next comment, the original commenter isn't the fanboy, it's the guy who replies underneath it. He says that he's going to buy the Xbox One Series X. And I ask him why he's doing that, because, you know, curious, keeping a conversation going. Then he says the best console, and I said, oh, okay, cool, what makes it the best? And he says it's the best because the specs and the price. So then... Bring in the fanboy who says to me, seriously, dude, not everyone likes the same things as you. Get over it. I mean, can you imagine the absolute level of triggered you need to be to walk up to a conversation, which is essentially what you're doing in this comment section, and then getting upset with one of the people because he was asking the other what he liked about the Xbox? <laughs> Yeah, guys, I just can't stand it that people play on Xbox. I think that they're awful people. Or apparently, at least, that's what this guy seems to think, I think. 
At the end of the day, if you play on Xbox, I don't care. You know, play on whatever you want to. You know, there's really no point in doing so when you could do the exact same thing on a PC, but if that's what your preference is, fine, whatever. You know, make your own purchasing decisions. But why on earth are you getting mad when somebody else says, hey, there's this other platform you could use that has the same games for about the same price point, but you get access to even more titles and better features for it. I feel like it's only the gaming world where this would exist. Because can you imagine somebody buying a car and then somebody else, or talking about buying a car, and then somebody else comes up to you and says, hey, you know, there's this other brand of car you could get for about the same price, but it has more features and more options available to you. And, you know, you don't have to do certain things to maintain it as often and just all these other little perks. I mean, I would think that most people would be kind of grateful to have that information and would look more into it. But when it comes to a gaming system, oh no, how dare you insult the thing that they are thinking about buying. I mean, their last vehicle was this brand and gosh darn it, they're not changing anything. Well, this fine fellow actually made another comment later down, and he says, Not all console gamers have a PC, or decent enough PC to run those games. Some console gamers do not even play PC games, so this kind of makes your point invalid. Yeah, I mean, he's right. I mean, my whole point was that all the Xbox games are on PC, and a PC is a better system because it gives you more options and greater freedom to decide how you want to play your games. But since people don't play just... PC only games, I guess, then that just makes the point invalid because reasons. And I basically point out as much to him that that was what my point was originally. And so then he goes on to say that not everyone is a PC gamer or interested in playing on the PC. The console market is a huge market and has been for generations, which I, again, don't get the point at all. So what if a console market is huge? or has been for generations. What difference does that make in what your better purchasing decision is now? But regardless, moving on, he then says there's a huge amount of people who are just console gamers. I never said otherwise, but okay. And the Series X will be the most powerful console in the world. People thinking that games will instantly look amazing straight away should really loom at past generations. It will take a few years before we start seeing what this console can do. But straight from the box, it will be 4K, and most games will be 60 FPS or more. He then links me an article basically saying that the cost of building a gaming PC is going to be a lot more than $500. One that has similar specs to the Xbox Series X anyway. There's already a couple of problems with this, one being that we don't know the price is going to be $500 yet because Microsoft hasn't said as much, that's just speculation, and we don't know what hardware is in it because it hasn't shipped the box yet. And I went ahead and checked out the article, it was on trustedreviews.com, and it is an absolute garbage pile of an article. They're saying, they're putting a PC build up against the Xbox Series X, and they put in a Ryzen 7 3700X processor. They put in 16 gigabytes of RAM, and they put in an RTX 2080 Super. There's people that think that an Xbox Series X is going to have anything near these types of specs. A $300 CPU and a $700 GPU. That's another reason that I hate these types of articles, these clickbait garbage that these journal websites put out, because there's people who will actually fall for this because they don't do research and they don't really know how hardware pricing works, because they'll just read these speculative clickbaity articles and then they'll just totally fall for it. They'll suck it right up and spew it right back out. It's honestly pretty pathetic. I don't even necessarily blame the people reading it as much as I do the people writing it who honestly should know better. And most likely probably do. We see this whole thing every single generation. This console is going to be something that's going to completely wipe out the PC. We saw it with the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4. We saw it with the PlayStation 4 Pro. We saw it with the Xbox X. And now we're seeing it with the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X. So we go back and forth for a little bit while longer, and every single comment, he says that the Xbox Series X will hit 4K60, and then I go on to explain how he cannot know that because of all these different factors, but every single comment, he just repeats the same line. 
In most cases, there is no reason why games will not hit 4K 60 FPS. Xbox One X had no problem doing this. Well, that's not true. Have you heard about checkerboard upscaling? Have you heard about Destiny's 2 30 FPS? For that matter, have you heard that the newest Assassin's Creed game is going to be 30 FPS on the Series X? Valhalla? Does that possibly ring a bell? And I wouldn't exactly call Assassin's Creed a game that's known for groundbreaking new graphics technology or anything. The next comment, what we know about the hardware, 60 FPS 4K will not be a problem. Well, that's the problem is you don't know anything about the hardware. And then the third comment, the Series X will clearly hit 60 plus 4K, even if it's upscaled 4K. Well, there's a pretty stark difference between upscaled 4K and native 4K, but I'm more concerned with the fact that you don't seem to understand that saying the same thing over and over again doesn't just magically make it true. All PlayStation games are also now coming to PC? Stupid argument. I mean, you know, if you'd actually bothered to watch the video, I never said that. I just said that Sony seemed to be tentatively starting to push their games onto the PC platform with Horizon Zero Dawn and Detroit Become Human and Death Stranding. To be fair, only one of which is a first-party title. But you are definitely starting to see more and more previously Sony exclusive games also coming to PC and I think that's a good sign that they are starting to head into that direction. At no point did I ever say all but generally since you guys seem to ignore what I put in my videos I guess you know. Why would you let facts get in the way of you now? I don't know what to believe with that voice. Yeah, because, I mean, of course, you know, my voice is totally relevant to what I'm saying in the video. If somebody's voice doesn't sound, you know, like a normal voice, the kind of a voice you expect, you know, if it doesn't sound aged with wisdom or squeaky enough to fuss at somebody and talk about somebody's mom in a Call of Duty lobby, then, yeah, you can't believe anything they have to say. Okay guys, so the video is getting a little bit long, but I have thankfully saved the best, the most juiciest comment for last. But if you want to see a part two to this, please do let me know as I would be more than happy to make another one. But for our final comment, we have somebody saying, so you're not buying a 200 to 500 euro Xbox Series X because instead you want a $1,000 PC that is a little stronger than the Xbox and also has has a chance of catching fire if you don't build it right. We, this guy thinks that if you don't put your PC together correctly, it's going to catch fire. You're going to have a ticking firebomb that you're playing your games on. Oh my gosh, the amount of ignorance in this comment is so, so incredible. Also, he says 200 to 500 euro Xbox Series X. Uh, buddy, 200 to 500 is kind of a really wide range. I don't think I've ever seen a console that was just $200 at launch that wasn't just, you know, a little emulation box, like but an actual official current gen console. Yeah, they've never been that cheap as far as I'm aware, and that's pretty wide. You're talking about a 300 euro margin here. But then, but no, but the funny thing is, the funny thing, ignoring that, ignoring that you think a $1,000 PC is a little bit stronger, you think it's going to catch fire. Oh, uh, this is this is the kind of stuff I have to deal with, guys. I have to deal with the pure ignorance of people who are playing consoles, coming up with random numbers of what they think and... PC that's equivalent to a console is going to cost them, and then they talk about fire and viruses and, you know, random stuff like that. You know what, why don't we start saying that PC gamers have to deal with alien invasions, because that's about as accurate a statement. Anyway, guys, that's going to do it for my video. I hope you all enjoyed it. This was a lot of fun to do. And uh, I have a lot more of these comments, once again, if you want to see a part two. I'm going to be making another video soon talking about PlayStation Plus. Uh, so I'm sure that will not only trigger the Sony PlayStation fanboys, but it will also prove these Xbox fanboys wrong that I am a Sony fanboy. So, fun fine. Anyway, till next time, I've been your host, Cast Gaming. Subscribe for more stuff like this. Like the video if you enjoyed it, or dislike it if you're a fanboy. And follow me on Twitter for t a ton of hot takes. And until next time, I will see you all at the top. I'm about to end this man's whole career. I, 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 I,